Hello, everyone, and welcome to this video overview of our sixth evidence-based instructional practice where we are focusing on meaningful feedback. My name is Fox DeMoise. I'm joined today by Misty Higgins, and we are professional learning coordinators in the Division of Program Standards Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. This year, we're focusing our work around addressing two essential questions. What evidence-based instructional practices best support Kentucky educators in designing classroom instruction aligned to the Kentucky academic standards? And how might teachers effectively implement these practices to help students meet the expectations within the CAS? We are currently in year three of the three-year implementation plan that is focused on evidence-based instructional practices. The goal of this work is to help educators build a deep understanding of several evidence-based practices based on current research and to support teachers as they implement those practices into classroom instruction. So why focus on evidence-based instructional practices? First and foremost, because all students deserve access to quality, standards-aligned, grade-level information. And we know from research the quality of day-to-day -day instruction students receive can have a significant impact on overall achievement. By intentionally and strategically selecting and utilizing evidence-based instructional practices, teachers help to ensure students are working towards reaching their intended learning outcomes within the CAS. This is the last evidence-based instructional practice in our professional learning series for 2021-2022. Three were released in the fall of 2021, and the other three were released in the spring of 2022. While there are numerous evidence-based instructional practices we could have chosen, these six were strategically selected because they support students in reaching their intended learning outcomes across all content areas and within the CATS. For each of the six professional learning modules, we will be releasing a video overview, facilitation considerations for structuring the professional learning, a general overview that defines evidence-based instructional practices and why they are critically important to student success, an introduction on the released evidence-based instructional practice that synthesizes the current research on that practice and content-specific resources to support classroom implementation. So now let's look at the six evidence-based instructional practice focused on meaningful feedback. There are six key areas included in the narrative overview. So the introduction connects feedback to its role in the formative assessment process, highlights the potential effect it can have on learning and how in order for that to happen, educators have to understand the key elements of feedback that make it meaningful to students. The second section overviews the role of meaningful feedback in the learning process in terms of supporting students cognition, achievement motivation, metacognitive abilities and their self regulation. For feedback to be effective, students have to receive and act on it, so classroom climate plays an important role. Section 3 highlights the importance of student, teacher, and peer relationships and the view towards errors, being stuck, and having misconceptions in helping students to be receptive to and act on feedback. Section four takes a closer look at the role of feedback in the formative assessment process and how it is anchored in students being able to answer three critical questions about their learning. Where am I going? Where am I now? And where to next? This section also looks at the connection between feedback, clear learning goals and success criteria and high quality tasks and assignments. Section five focuses on how teachers can provide meaningful feedback aligned to what research shows is most effective. So it highlights three common characteristics of meaningful feedback and examines three levels of feedback that can positively impact student learning. The last section focuses on peer and self feedback in terms of the role of each in the learning process and possible strategies for building students skill with each. In addition to the narrative portion that summarizes the current research on feedback, we've also included content specific resources focused on the following three areas of support. Connections between the practice of meaningful feedback and the cast for each content area, planning considerations for implementing this practice in each content area, and then finally strategies and resources to support uh, educators in implementing the practice in their classroom. Thank you for watching this overview video and as always if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to either me or Fox.